Thank you, Suzanne. So, yeah, the topic today is change by project, um, which basically means forget about big change, uh, but how can you uh, foster sustainable business value um, by actually doing projects, uh, putting them into a change context. Now, uh, our observations are that these days, everything's about big change, right? So disruption, transformation, uh, is on the agenda on a daily basis for a lot of our organizations that we are partnering with. And from time to time, I think to myself, well, can you actually be a cool company or a sexy employer these days without uh, stating somewhere that you're in the transformational process? Now, let's take a moment here and um, let's think about why we do projects in the first place. Uh, it's not because we would like to do projects, right? Uh, the idea behind these projects is to generate sustainable business value, to, to generate an outcome uh, that uh, actually provides real value after the project is over. And this, from our point of view, dramatically changes the way that projects can be seen or should be perceived. I would like to invite you to ask yourselves, uh, take a moment here, um, how often do you actually achieve project results that provide sustainable business value to the organization after the project is finished? So let's say one year later, what did you actually achieve? What difference did you actually make uh, for the organization? Now, in our observations, as I stated, this very often um, doesn't look too bright. So yes, we do projects, yes, we come to results, but very often by the end of the project, markets have changed, technology has changed, and we were not fast enough uh, in adapting while doing these projects. So maybe we achieved the project objectives that were defined uh, way before, uh, probably one or two years earlier. But the question is, is this still appropriate? Is this still what we need right now at this point in time? And very often the answer to this question is no. And therefore, we would like to put the project into a change context. Uh, and therefore help organizations to actually uh, achieve sustainable business value. So um, these screenshots that you can see now, some of them might be familiar to you, uh, some of you might have stumbled across uh, bigger transformations, bigger changes uh, before, and very often those changes are not successful. Now, you could approach this from two different angles, right? One uh, approach could be that you strengthen, uh, strengthen change management competences in your organization in order to increase the quality when you're confronted with a change, uh, a bigger change, right? Um, another approach is uh, to actually challenge the change itself. So. How did we come into the situation? How did we get so far that this big change now is necessary? Well, I would agree that sometimes this is put upon you from external uh, stakeholders, but uh, very often it's uh, a lack of quality internally, right? So missed opportunities, um, missed chances, uh, unsuccessful projects, and all of these small steps where you were not quite that good, they add up, and this brings you to a spot where uh, in the end, it's the question of, well, big change or dramatic uh, consequences. And therefore, um, I would like to focus on the smaller steps in our webinar for today, okay? So maybe we can transform the way we think about projects and um, by putting them into a change context, think about what's this little tiny step of change that we should actually introduce into the organization while doing the project in order for the results to be actually of value, to be successful in the long run. So what you will not get here today, what I will not talk about, um, the five lessons of whatever, or the seven hacks for uh, the perfect change, or the 10 steps to better project management. There's a saying, uh, I'm pretty sure some of you are familiar with this already. For every complex problem, there's an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. And therefore, uh, what I would like to offer is a differentiated understanding of change. So what is it that we really talk about? 
when we talk about change, uh, a new way of proceeding projects, uh, doing this by applying an integrated and holistic approach. What's on the agenda for today? Uh, this is what I prepared and what I would like to walk you through and I'm interested in discussing it afterwards as well. So change uh, does not equal transformation. There are different kinds of change. Uh, this is what I would like to look at first. And then I would like to look at the uh, relationship between change management versus project management. The next step would be to uh, look at which change aspects um, actually need to be included in projects in order to achieve sustainable business results. And in the end, I would like to provide a brief outlook of what we see uh, could be adapted or work the future holds for us uh, when applying this way of thinking. Differentiation of change types is what I would like to start with. Um, so, in our understanding, there are very uh, different ways of differentiating change, and there are lots of theories uh, on change management liter literature, which change uh, types could be differentiated. Now, you might know the differentiation in first order and second order changes, according to uh, Levi and Mary, and this is an approach that we use to first develop. Uh, so. What you can see on the left side is the change demand. So how big is the demand that we see for change? And on the uh, bottom axis, you can see the change dimension. So which dimensions of the organization are affected and to what extent? Now, uh, you see these green arrows. This would be transforming or radical repositioning. Uh, those were these typical second-order changes, right? So high change demand, lots of uh, dimensions are involved. So if we talk about digital transformation, for instance, uh, in an organization, then, of course, this affects not only products, but also the processes, the services. Uh, it has a whole lot of consequences for the personnel, uh, for the markets that you enter and how you enter them, the infrastructure that you need, and so on and so on. On the other hand, uh, let's take a second and think about product development. Now, for product development, if you develop a new product, this doesn't necessarily mean you need to transform the entire organization, correct? This means, uh, well, you have to develop a new product, you have to train people, you have to make sure uh, that this new product can then be used by a line organization to uh, generate uh, additional revenues uh, whatsoever, but still, there are some adaptations to the organization necessary, there are some adaptations to infrastructure necessary, and so on. And this is a critical part here, because for the green ones, the big changes, the transformations, or radical repositioning, so this would really be the crisis situation, this is where change management actually uh, gets this uh, high management attention, where you have a formalized change management process, and you have change managers in place, change agents probably, and so on, right? There are methods to be applied and there are standards and guidelines and so on. Uh, however, uh, for the orange one, this is what actually happens in the daily project work, and this is where change management actually lacks focus, right? So from a change management point of view, you would not formalize uh, this a lot. You would not uh, focus on this from a change management point of view. You would just assume, well, it's a project and they should take care of it. And this is where we very often see a gap uh, in practice. So these minor changes, these orange ones, they need attention too. And the question remains uh, of how much attention do they need and by whom uh, do they get this attention. Now, looking at uh, these change dimensions uh, a little more closely, what do I mean? Right? So if we have a digital transformation, for instance, there are lots of internal structures and context dimensions of an organization uh, that need to be covered or that are affected. Right? So services, products, markets, uh, and so on, 